This is a hot spot located in Qingyuan City, Guangdong Province. Rows of vintage buildings with carved railings and painted eaves, unfinished villas, and overgrown weeds create a dilapidated scene. The adjacent Qingyuan Villa complex, with 17 rows of European style townhouses, only has completed frameworks surrounded by weeds. If you look closely, you'll notice graffiti on the walls of shops and villas demanding unpaid wages and debts. In the empty courtyard, a few social media influencers occasionally visit, adding a touch of vitality to the otherwise desolate complex. Being there in person, one can't help but feel a sense of awe at the changes in the world and the rise and fall of prosperity. This is not an abandoned ancient architectural complex, but rather a tourism and industrial park called Imperial Gold Street, developed by the local government. It used to be seen as the business card of Qingyuan City. Construction began in 2009 and was suspended in June of 2012, remaining unfinished for nearly 11 years. This is just one of the countless similar projects in China. Let's take a closer look at the story behind it and try to understand the patterns behind such developments. To start, we have to go back to 2009. Qingyuan City is located in the central part of Guangdong Province, just a 45-minute drive from the first-tier city of Guangzhou. Qingyuan has abundant tourism resources, including picturesque mountains and gorges, pristine forests, spectacular rivers and lakes, and karst caves and hot springs. It is also a major settlement area for ethnic minorities in Guangdong Province. The beautiful scenery combined with ethnic customs has attracted many tourists from nearby cities such as Guangzhou and Shenzhen, gradually becoming a preferred destination for short-distance trips. The annual tourist flow exceeds 30 million people. In 2009, the Qinyuan city government decided to build a tourism service center, and the Imperial Gold Street project was approved and included as one of Qinyuan's top 10 key projects. Imperial Gold Street, or Yujin Street, is located in an excellent location at the exit of Guangqing Expressway, covering an area of 71,596 square meters. It is officially positioned as a super tourism complex that integrates entertainment, shopping, leisure, dining, hotels, tourism information centers, and cultural experiences. The architectural style of Yujin Street is in the style of the Tang Dynasty, for the purpose of revitalizing the glory of the Tang Dynasty buried in history by the passage of time. In 2009, the Yujin Street project was put up for bidding by the Qingyuan city government. Since it was a government-led project as well as for public welfare, the government decided to offer concessions to the developers. First, the starting price for the land was set at 250,000 RMB per mu, with one mu being an area of land equivalent to one fifteenth of a hectare. While the market price for surrounding lands was around 300,000 RMB per mu at the time. Second, the developers were allowed to use about 80 mu of land in the southeast part of the plot to build villas. The whole project consisted of the Royal Golden Street Tourism Industrial Park and Qingyuan Villas. However, the project must meet the conditions proposed by the government. It must not be too low-end, it must be sophisticated, because it is located at the exit of the highway and is practically the first window to Qingyuan City. Later, the Qingyuan Changli Xing Company won the bid for the development of this land. However, apart from the 20 million RMB land auction deposit, the company failed to deliver the remaining land payments on time due to funding issues. In order to keep the project going, the owner transferred the shares to Zongxin Investment, which became the controlling shareholder of Changli Xing. It was revealed by insiders that Zongxin Investment had six other real estate projects under construction in Qingyuan City at the same time. Zhao Zhenjun, the head of the market development division of the Qingyuan City Tourism Bureau, said that Changli Xing had previously submitted several rounds of designs for the Yujin Street project but they were rejected by the Qingyuan city government because they were considered low-ended designs, resembling food stalls rather than a comprehensive tourism complex. Yet, after Zongxin investment took over, it was a whole different story. 
the owner of Zhongxin Investment, Chen Jian, decided to reposition and upgrade Yujin Street, abandoning the previous low-end design concept and instead positioning the architectural style as a super tourism cultural and commercial street with the theme of the prosperous Tang Dynasty. Chen Jian had very strict requirements for the construction of Yujin Street, both in terms of design and material use, striving for a high-end, grand, and upscale look. Unlike the previous design by Chang Li Xing, Yujin Street now features a palace-like appearance with an all-wood structure. Chen Jian spared no expense in hiring a top domestic antique architecture design firm and imported stone materials from Thailand to enhance the grandeur of the project, even with the assistance of professionals from Japan. On February 28, 2011, the first phase of Yujin Street was completed, and the Qingyuan City Tourism Service Center officially moved in. According to official local government media Qingyuan Daily, in September of the same year, the Qingyuan Tourism Bureau issued a notice requiring travel agencies and tourism enterprises to actively cooperate with the Tourism Service Center, making it the first stop for welcoming tourists from other places. It also required that all tour groups entering Qingcheng and Qingxin be arranged to gather at the Tourism Service Center and actively encourage tourism enterprises to settle in, jointly contributing to the city's tourism image. Around the completion of Yujin Street's shops in 2011, Zhongxin Investment announced that the shops will be sold at a high price of 30,000 RMB per square meter, and promised to rent back the shops for five years at a rent equivalent to 47% of the property price. Shop owner Ms. Liu said, The price of 30,000 RMB per square meter is similar to the busiest streets in the city center. This project is one of the key projects developed by the Qingyuan city government, so investors were confident, rushing to buy. The first batch of over 100 shops sold out quickly, but now... Miss Liu sighed and tears welled up in her eyes as she wiped them away with her hand. In 2012, business was once booming here. Who would have thought it was a trap? Another shop owner exclaimed, eyes wide open and bloodshot. In early 2012, the influence of Eugene Street was unexpectedly large, attracting visits and study tours from officials and tourism industry professionals from Shaoxing and other places. Not to speak for the whole country, but at least in South China, Eugene Street was a distinctive tourism complex project, said Zhao Zhengjun. Clearly, shop owners like Ms. Liu, who hoped for high returns through investing in Eugene Street, could not have imagined that the situation would take a sharp downturn shortly after they purchased the shops. In June 2012, problems appeared in Zhongxin Investments' funding chain, and the Yujin Street project lacked subsequent investment, resulting in incomplete fire protection, water and electricity facilities, and failure to pass government inspections. Yujin Street experienced water and electricity cuts. Ms. Liu spent over 1 million RMB to purchase a shop of over 40 square meters in Yujin Street in early 2012, but the shop was not delivered as scheduled, and the property certificate was not obtained. According to the contract, she was supposed to receive rental income from the developer starting from May 1st of 2014, but after nine years, she still has not received any rent. There are over 100 owners just like Ms. Liu who are in the same situation. Not only the owners, but also the construction contractor, Meiya Company, suffered damages. Since the start of the Yujin Street project, Meiya Company has advanced a large amount of funds for construction. In June 2012, there was no further investment, and the company was owed over 76 million RMB in engineering fees, which prevented normal operations. The owner of the company, Lai Zhuojia, has been dealing with the issue of unpaid engineering fees on a full-time basis since the Yujin Street project was abandoned. He has filed six lawsuits, but has not received any payment so far. He is still staying at Yujin Street, determined to get back the project money. In addition, the rights and interests of migrant workers in Maya's construction team have also been compromised. Due to Maya Company's inability to receive project funds, they have been unable to settle wages for over 800 workers, resulting in over 36 million RMB in unpaid wages for more than 10 years. 
many material suppliers are also owed payment. Is the Yujin Street project's abandonment really due to the funding problems of Zhongxin Investment? Maya Company's owner Lai Zhuojia does not agree. He repeatedly emphasized to reporters that Zhongxin Investment had already obtained a 220 million RMB loan from Qinyuan Rural Commercial Bank for the Yujin Street project from Changli Xing, the subsidiary it controls, and this money had already been transferred. However, Zhongxin Investment did not use this money as intended, but instead diverted it elsewhere. Lai Zhuojia insists that Meiya Company is the project's primary creditor. However, he is concerned that if the project goes bankrupt and is auctioned, Qingyuan Rural Commercial Bank may take all the money that is recovered. According to officials from the Qingyuan City Housing and Construction Bureau, for property owners who have not yet obtained the property ownership certificates, it is evident that the green light will not be given without the completion and acceptance of the project. Owners have repeatedly reported this issue to the government, requesting the establishment of a specialized working group to strengthen coordination and supervision among departments such as construction, tourism, public security, and the court, and to take measures such as bankruptcy and reorganization against the Changli Xing Company in order to quickly find a qualified strategic investor to resume construction on the Yujin Street project. However, despite assurances from the Qingyuan Municipal Housing and Construction Bureau to coordinate the matter, there has been little progress over the years. If we don't have to continue paying the mortgage for the purchased commercial properties, I can accept it to minimize our losses, but the bank does not agree, said an anonymous property owner. It is understood that the down payment for commercial properties was originally 50% of the total price, which is generally over 1 million RMB. Why did the Yujin Street project fail? Who ultimately suffered the most damage? And who are the real winners? Firstly, the victims of the stalled Yujin Street project include the unfortunate store owners who have spent hundreds of thousands of RMB to purchase commercial properties but have been waiting for 12 years without obtaining property ownership certificates, while still being required to make monthly mortgage payments to the bank. Next, it is the construction company Meya that is owed over 76 million RMB in project payments resulting in over 36 million RMB in wages being withheld from more than 800 migrant workers. On the other hand, the developer Zhongxin Investment has sold commercial properties and obtained over 100 million RMB, as well as a loan of 220 million RMB from a rural commercial bank. The Qingyuan municipal government has received 26.75 million RMB from land sales, Similar large-scale cultural tourism projects that have stalled can be found in many parts of China. Since 2016, driven by the booming tourism industry and the promotion of supply-side structural reforms, many Chinese real estate developers have shifted their investments towards the cultural and tourism industry, giving rise to a new term called cultural tourism real estate. According to data, from 2016 to 2019, Direct investment in cultural tourism in China exceeded 3 trillion RMB. However, due to inadequate market research and even non-compliance in many projects, coupled with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, these cultural tourism real estate projects plummeted from the peak of popularity, and many real estate developers have faced debt crises in recent years, resulting in a large number of unfinished cultural tourism projects. The series of landscape-themed towns undoubtedly tops the list of unfinished projects. Between 2015 and 2017, the Riverside Group relentlessly planned cultural tourism projects and announced the creation of 11 theme parks in three locations, Zhejiang, Chongqing, and Nanjing, with a total announced investment of over 95 billion RMB. However, currently, except for the project in Haiyan County in Zhejiang, which was taken over by Sunak, a real estate company facing a debt crisis, the rest of the projects are all suspended. The Sino Wonderland in Huainan, built by Zhigao Group, was founded in March 2010, covering an area of 1,200 mu, or around 800,000 square meters. With a total investment of 6 billion RMB, and claiming to be the largest amusement park in Asia. Unfortunately, the project only operated for one day and was shut down due to suspected illegal land use, and has been abandoned for over a decade. 
This large-scale project was also introduced through the investment promotion by Huainan City, but ended up with such a sad fate. The Xuchang Three Kingdoms Cultural Industrial Park, a major Class A project in Henan Province supported by the Henan Provincial Tourism Bureau, spans an extensive planned area of 1,318 mu, or around 878,000 square meters, with a total investment of approximately 4.8 billion RMB. However, it has been marred by financial difficulties. Despite commencing construction in 2013 and originally scheduled to open to the public in 2018, the project came to a halt in 2016 due to a broken funding chain and has remained unfinished and inaccessible to the public since then. Located in Xianning City, Hubei Province, the large-scale abandoned tourist project Xiangquan Yingyue Resort was a key construction project in Hubei Province in 2014, with an investment of 6 billion RMB. The entire project covers an area of 3,985 mu, or 2.66 million square meters, equivalent to about 372 football fields in size. It is a comprehensive urban ecological cultural tourism project combining tourism, commerce, and real estate. It includes a 506,000 square meters Zhonghua Osmensis Expo Park. The Tianxiang Town was leisure and entertainment facilities and hotels, a live action theater for the large scale mythology musical Chang'e, and a high end villa area with a construction scale of 97,000 square meters. However, this project also ultimately failed, and the live action theater for Chang'e, which took three years to build, was abandoned after only one year of operation. Now, the site is in ruins, with broken walls and overgrown weeds. Clearly, these unfinished projects have resulted in a tremendous waste of social resources. Multiple parties are involved, including the government, developers, banks, contractors, and ordinary investors slash property owners. These projects are like a massive time bomb, and when they explode, the ordinary investors and property owners are the ones who suffer the most, while local governments always seem to make profits and never incur losses. The Chinese Communist Party government claims to uphold the rule of law, but its laws are never aimed at maintaining social fairness and justice, but rather to ensure its absolute power.